Want to be able to score in traffic like Kyrie Irving, James Harden, or Stephen Curry? Today I'm going to show you how to be a scoring machine. Buckle up and pay attention because I'm going to show you seven main concepts that you can use to improve your scoring around the rim. Coach Jesse Minchin will get handles where I show you how to play like the pros and beyond so you can reach your dreams. Make sure you click that subscribe button to catch the newest videos. The very first concept we want to talk about is just simply maneuvering between defenders. So what that means is basically if I got two defenders here and I'm attacking from this angle, I'm going to maneuver if I have a defender here maybe where he's playing down low trying to reach the ball, I'll bring the ball over the top. And then if I have a defender up here waiting high, maybe I'll bring the ball back down once I get around this guy and then go up for the layup. You also want to keep in mind when we're talking about maneuvering between defenders using your footwork, right? Stepping between this guy here so I can get this angle to split this gap. Or maybe I would maneuver around this defender if I know I can get past him, right? So the basic concept of maneuvering basically comes down to moving the ball and your body in areas where the defenders are not. It's a real simple concept that makes things a lot easier and it'll work a lot of the time if you're a quicker player. Now for each of these concepts, I'm gonna to try to give you ideas of which technique will be work best based on your abilities and your style of play, your body build and all that. So this concept is gonna work really well if you're a little bit of a quicker type of a player. If you have long arms, it can really help with moving the ball. But even if you don't have long arms, guys like Kyrie Irving are really good with this by using their feet to maneuver around defenders. If you're a slower type player, this is probably not a concept you're gonna to wanna to use quite as much. Right, next concept is gonna to be to create contact. Now this can be used for pretty much any type of player. It's gonna work really well if you're a little bit of a stronger player, maybe not quite as quick, but even guys like Kyrie Irving, Steph Curry will use this a lot. And basically all you wanna do with it is worry about making a little bit of contact. Generally you wanna to try to get your shoulders low for this and try to hit them around their hips. Now when I say hit, I don't mean like barreling into them. You don't wanna like knock guys over. You just wanna create a little bit of contact, just enough to create some separation right before you're going up for that shot. So it's a way of kind of like maneuvering around your defender without going around them. You're using contact to get them to move a little bit. Now again, you have to be careful with this. You don't wanna hit them too hard, just enough to bump them a little bit. And you wanna to try to make sure you're doing it more into their side, not directly into the front of them. If you do that, you're probably gonna get called for a fall. But if you get them a little more to the side here, now you're probably gonna be good to go. You could do this especially on bigger guys. This is gonna be really effective for bigger players if you're a shorter player because you're gonna be able to more easily hit them lower where their center of gravity is. You hit them around their hips, they're moving. Okay, hips, chest, this whole area here. You get them in that area, there's a good chance they're gonna move. Ideally though, if you can get them around the hips, as you go right before you're going up for that shot, there's a good chance you'll be able to get them to move. Now, keep in mind with all these concepts, you can combine a lot of these, right? Because when we're talking about layouts with traffic, there's gonna be multiple defenders. So if maybe I have a defender here, I'm gonna worry about maneuvering to get around him, create contact with this guy, and then try to come for that finish, right? You might have to bring multiple concepts together to get the job done when you got multiple defenders. So you might wanna rewatch this video multiple times and think about how you can string together these different concepts based on different game situations. It's really fun for me to watch all the different ways that NBA players go about finishing around the rim with multiple defenders in traffic. But I wanna know who you think the best is, so make sure you leave me a comment down below and let me know. Okay, next main concept, I'm gonna give you a bunch of different ways to do it, and it's the fake out. So basically with the fake out, you could do this different ways. One way would be to like fake a pass to get this defender to jump out this way now. Now you create that ability and that space to get that layup off. Another way you can go about it, and this is really popular nowadays, would be like a Euro step. So you would jump this way to get the defender to again jump out here, create the pass to come out here. Or you could even do it the other way, right? You could jump with a Euro step this way to get him to jump here. Now two defenders are jumping into each other, make them look foolish, you get your layup off, right? So a lot of ways you can go about doing that. Again, kind of like what we talked about earlier in the first concept, with maneuvering, think about using your feet to create that fake out. Think about using ball movement. Another thing you could do is, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit more later, but you could fake them out to make them think you're gonna shoot and then come under, okay? A lot of different ways you can go about that. If you wanna learn more about different concepts and specific finishes, little card that's gonna be shown up in the top right hand corner of the screen, that's gonna show you a bunch of specific different ways of finishing. It's two different videos that are gonna show you a ton of different finishes that'll help you a lot. This next one is, huge for players, pretty much of all sizes, but especially for smaller guards, it's to throw off their timing. Now there's a ton of different ways you can go about this. I'm gonna just give you a quick rundown of a bunch of them. One of the first ways I really like to do is the one step layup. So they're expecting you to go one, two step and they're gonna time that, right? Well, you can just short step that by going one and going right up to that layup and it's gonna throw their timing off. Another way you can go about it is getting the shot off quick here with a floater or a runner 
way before you get to the defender so they don't see that timing coming. Another thing you could do, again, is what like we talked about a little bit ago, throwing a pump fake and coming up and under, either in the air or the pump fake, and then stepping through. But the basic concept is to throw up their timing and positioning. Another thing you could do too that Kyrie does a lot, Stephen Curry does this, and Harden to some degree, they'll take the two steps, and instead of going up for the shot right away, they'll kind of hang in the air as long as they can. So that puts them in a different position and a bit different timing. Michael Jordan used to do this a ton as well. And almost right before they land, they'll put the shot up. By throwing up pump fakes, in the air pump fakes, one step layups, floaters, or finishing right before you land, those are all great ways to get your shot off. This technique's great for players that are a little bit bigger and not as agile, not as mobile, not as good at being quick and maneuvering around defenders, but it's also gonna be great for players that are you know, shorter, quicker, those types of players, this is also gonna help. And it's basically just to protect the basketball. So what I mean by that is, if you have a, a defender here, maybe if you're working around on this side, again, keeping your body between them and the basketball so it's protected, but even if you're gonna go right down the gut, right, right down the middle and there's multiple defenders, just basically either cuffing the basketball, so what that means is you're gonna put it from your hand into your forearm and to take it even next level, try to bring it all the way in here. Think like a running back trying to you know, break through the offensive and defensive line and not get the ball knocked around, right? Think like that. Another thing you can do is get both hands on the ball and be strong with it. That's one big key when you're in traffic. And I would apply this to pretty much all these finishes unless you know you got a lot of room to work with and the defender's not gonna be able to get to the basketball. But for the most part, try to get both hands on the ball and really grip it hard or bring it in towards your stomach. That's a great way to protect it. So you can kind of take that contact. And again, you can bring this in with that concept of drawing contact or creating contact with your defender. You're gonna need to have a good handle on the basketball. And just on top of that, a lot of times when you get in the paint, a lot of defenders are gonna to try to slap that ball away from you. So if you're strong, you can like expect and almost invite them to try to grab the ball and still power through, right? And then one final way, this is a way that'll probably be better for guards that are a little more agile and have really good ball control. It's to one hand protect it, but keep it out wide here. So if I'm gonna come for a layup, maybe I'm gonna create contact. Again, combining some of these concepts, I can keep the ball out here where they can't get to it. And then from there, finish in kind of an area they wouldn't expect. Bunch of different ways to go about applying this concept based on you know your style of play and your abilities, but definitely put it in the mix and again, combine it with some of the other concepts. This concept's gonna be a little bit different than a lot of the other ones we talked about, but it's gonna bring in a lot of those elements as well. It's kind of a little bit more of a mental shift and it's to draw the fall. So you could do this again by creating contact, or trying to get the defender to go for contact. And that's the main way I want to talk about with this. When you're doing like you're maneuvering with the basketball or trying to throw their timing off, those concepts, a lot of times you can draw the fall from the defender. And something you could do is actively try to draw that fall, expect to try to get fouled, but then don't worry about getting the fall call and you know looking to the ref right away, where's my fall call? Instead, approach it like, hey, I'm gonna make sure I get fouled but from there, I'm still gonna try to finish and make the layup. So even if I don't get that fall call, I'll finish. If I do get the fall call, boom, I got an and one, I look like a beast, right? But it's a mental thing you have to keep in mind. So one thing that Harden will do a lot, he'll move the ball up real high here, or I'll even move it down low here, and he'll try to get the defender to kind of go for the ball. So he almost kind of baits them with the basketball to try to go for it. And then if they go and reach for it, right as they're reaching, he'll move his arms real quick. So when they're going for the ball here, they're expecting to hit it here, but all of a sudden he moves and boom, they slap his arm instead of the basketball. And again, you might need to combine, you know, some of the other concepts that we talked about earlier in the video to make this happen, but that's pretty much it. You know, just putting the ball out there, trying to get them to go for it, moving it around and throwing their timing off and positioning. So when they try to go for that block and swing for the ball, boom, you move, they slap your arm, you get that and one. But you also, again, have to have that mentality of being strong with the basketball, gripping it and still thinking about, hey, I'm gonna take this contact and get that finish. This concept is definitely gonna be an unexpected one and you probably aren't gonna see this one coming. It's to pass the basketball more, okay? And the reason you wanna do this, well, number one, you'll get some more assists and all that. And Steph Curry does this really well. Also, James Harden does a pretty good job of it. Chris Paul also does a great job of it. What that's gonna do, when you make these passes, that's gonna make him jump out, okay? So this would, this would basically be one of the help defenders. Both these guys were pretending these are help defenders. So I beat my man, I got in the lane, and this is my teammate's defender trying to come in and block my shot, right? So what you wanna do is, from time to time, throw that pass out behind him or right in front of him, whatever the case may be. Make sure you get the pass off, of course, so then all of a sudden your teammate gets that easy layup. Next time, what's gonna happen now is, 
you come in the lane and you start throwing in those pass picks, or maybe you won't even need to do that, your defender's gonna remember, hey, last time he came in the lane, he dished it out to this teammate, so I'm gonna stay out here. What you just did, because of that play, it set up your next play for an easy, wide open layup. Defender's not even by you. Putting some more passes into the mix, even kicking out to you know the three-point line, because sometimes you'll get those defenders sagging all the way in. That'll help open up so much more space for you. So next time when you come into the lane, you'll get a much easier layup. You won't have nearly as much help defense trying to you know close in on you and, and take the basketball from you, trying to block your shot. And you'll make things a lot easier for you so you don't have to deal with as much traffic. Now you just have to deal with maybe one help defender. Now one thing to keep in mind with all these finishes is there's three big things that keep a lot of players from being able to score around the rim. Now if you click the top link in the description down below, that's going to show you the three main things that keep players from scoring around the rim more effectively. If you click that, pop in your email, I'll send that video to you instantly for free. Also if you found this video helpful, make sure you click that subscribe button and get on that notification squad so you catch the newest videos the second they come out. I have new videos coming every Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday to help you play like the pros and beyond so you can reach your dreams. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more and make moves today.